All right, what we're going over here today is a 2F horizontal T-joint fillet weld uh, using the gas tungsten arc welding process. I guess I forgot to write that up there. But uh, this would be like the third lab you're doing through an intro course. You'd start with the plates, uh, four inches, where you're just doing kind of a surfacing. Then you would go with 1F, then you're going to go into your 2F, and immediately followed by your 3F, which would be probably the next one that we do here, which is going to be a vertical up uh, TIG weld. The setup here is going to be on pickling oil, carbon steel, that's what we're going to use. If you have stainless steel, that works too. They weld very similarly. The problem with carbon steel is you got to have it really, really clean. And you'll see in the video that because I'm using carbon steel, there'll be a little bit of uh, silicone that kind of follows the puddle as I go. There's a little bit of contamination there. With stainless steel, you really don't get that. Uh, we're going to use pickled and oil though. Our uh, plates are going to be eighth of an inch. You can see right here, there's a mock-up of the 2F. This is the correct position. Uh, right here, so it's basically flat on the table, the T-joint is, but the, the fillet weld is considered horizontal, all right? One inch wide, and then you can see down here, four inches in length, and they're both eighth of an inch plates. And you can see there's a weld symbol right here, so leg size of uh, eighth of an inch, arrow side, so that's going to be right here is where you're going to put the weld. There's the fillet weld symbol, and I've put small circles in the uh, tail because that's what we're going to be doing. Just kind of small circles to get that uh, weld to wet out, and then once it's out, we kind of go and we add the circles as we need it if it's not following the actual weld, all right? So in other words, if it's not getting out to where we want it to be, then we start doing the circles again and kind of go, and then we start doing the circles again. Usually, we have to do the circles after you dip. So you're going to dip, maybe do a little circle, dip, do a little circle. It all depends on your technique that you, you like to do, but that's what we're going to be doing out here, just kind of following the little small circle rule, if you will. Uh, our filler metal is going to be ER7-6, uh, 16th of an inch diameter. Um, i am just put the arrow up here as referencing the ER7-6, so 16th of an inch filler. Our tungsten is going to be 332nd of an inch in diameter, 2% thoriated. 100% uh, argon is our shielding gas, and we're going to run about uh, 30 cubic feet per hour on our flow meter. So we're going to go out in the lab here, and we'll show you the setup. Uh, we'll show you the plate, we'll show you the machine, the flow meter, and then we'll get going on this thing. So this is our setup here, looks just like our, our 1F video, which I'll throw that in the card in case you want to watch the 1F. And you can see it's just flat on the table, horizontal, fillet weld. And again, I left that plate on so that I can slide my hand down there while we try and get these video shots. We're going to do the same thing in the videos. My super focused video, we're going to do a beginning, a middle, and an end. And then my less focused video, we'll do one complete weld, and we'll look at the uh, complete welds in the end. Let's take a look at the machine. We did this again on the Lincoln Precision Tank 275. We'll have to get on Miller next time, give Miller a little action. Again, you're going to be on direct current electrode negative right here. Up here, you're going to be down on TIG mode. On remote, that means it's going to the foot pedal. This will take it off the foot pedal, and you're going to have to do a scratch start. Our amp adjustment here, we're around 126. I tried to go down to 114, and it just I just couldn't get a good flow with it, so I'm running a little hot again at 126. We'll take one quick look at our flow meter, and then we will uh, start uh, welding this thing. Here's a look at our flow meter. There's our bottle pressure right there. And if you look right here, just the pedal down, right around 30. Go up, you can see it's on argon. Sorry, I had to hand hold this because the lights were making it blurry. Right around 30 cubic feet per hour. Let's start welding this thing. Alright, so here we go. Strike the arc, get it wet on both sides, dab it, floor it, get your puddle started. And what I'm doing is little circles here. And when you first start the weld, you do the little circles to get it the width you want. And then once you get it the width you want, you can kind of lay off the circles a little bit if you want to. And you can see I keep doing the circles. I think when I was doing this, I was uh, I was um, dabbing circles, dabbing circles as I went across. So I basically was pausing the circles when I was dabbing. You can see it right there. And that's a pretty good shot of uh, what we do in this position. I'm extinguishing the arc, circling. Letting the uh, post purge hit, you'll be able to see it go away here in a second. Right there. And we're going to go to the middle now. Starting the arc. Getting it liquid. Getting the width determined. 
and start dabbing. Just little circles to get it going to where I like the proper width. Keeping your fiddler model on the front of the puddle, letting it draw off what it wants. And as it swells up, then you move it over. Dip, swells up, move it over. You want to keep them legs as equal as you can. Basically a triangle. Looks like we're getting ready to go to the end. So again, little circles. Let your post purge hit. There it goes. Now the end. Strike the air again. Get it liquid. Do little circles to get the width you want. And then start dabbing. Just draw it across. You can see right there the bottom's not fused. And I backed up and then went over it again. You got to recognize that if it's not fusing, you got to kind of uh, change your angle and get it down on that bottom plate and get it to fuse. Maybe back up a little bit like I did. Now we're getting to the end. We're going to extinguish the arc again. Do little circles until the liquid goes into solid. Let that post purge. Keep that atmosphere out of there. There it goes. Now this is the shot of me doing the entire joint with the other camera. And again you just dab it across. Now that first camera is right on top of it. You can see the circles a lot better than you can here. This camera is probably like a foot and a half away. And so you can barely see the circles. They're not really big circles. You can see a little bit here, but not as well as on that the other camera that's right on top of it. Once you get it flowing, just dab across the plate. Let the weld pull off what it wants from the wire. Keep them legs nice and even. Get to the end. Slowly let off the pedal. Do a circular motion until it goes from liquid to solid and then let the post purge hit. You can see that was red. Now it's not. There goes your post purge. Here's a final look at the second to last one we did, and it got kind of wide in the middle, so I did another one that came out a little bit better. I don't know if it'll look better in the video or not, but I'm going to show you this one first. I thought it kind of got wide in the middle, a little bit wider than eighth of an inch. So I did another one that I, thought, that I think is better. So this is the second to last one we did. Let's take a look at the uh, last one we did. This is a look at the last one we did. It came out real nice, mostly uniform. There's a little bit of wideness towards the end. I should ease up on the pedal a little bit, but it looks pretty good. It gives you an after look at one of these welds. We're going to get out of here. We're going to move into our 3F next. Thanks for watching and subscribing to TV Weld, and we will see you next time. We are out of here.